Hi, this is Phil Hinton. Welcome to another video here on avforums.tv. Have you ever wondered how to get film onto Blu-ray disc? Well, today we're at Panasonic Hollywood Labs here in Hollywood, and we're going to see how they transfer the master to the Blu-ray disc in 2D and 3D. My name is Jeff Floro, and I work in compression at the Panasonic Hollywood Laboratories. And basically what I do is I compress the, uh, un the video files that they send us or tapes are the type of sources that we get. We, get the, we compress that into a file that can be used for the Blu-ray. Um, the compression, uh, an uncompressed file can be about a, up to a terabyte or a terabyte and a half and we'll compress it down to something around the size of 30, 35 gigs. So it's a pretty amazing compression scheme. Um, the Panasonic uses its own proprietary uh, compre uh, compressor developed by uh, Kashiwagi-san, and uh, it's very versatile. It allows us to do a lot of different things to make the picture, uh, to edit the picture and make the picture look great, as you can see in this picture right here. Um, it's very good with working with film. Uh, Kashiwagi-san has spent a lot of time getting the compressor to handle film grain very well. This is a very clean picture. You're not seeing as much grain as some of the older pictures that are out there that we've done. But it really works well with that and gives it a natural look. What happens is the, the uh, picture area is divided into little grids or blocks. And in those blocks, uh, the compressor looks at what material is redundant or it's, you know, that it can save. For example, if I'm standing against a, a, a wall that's there's no motion, it'll keep those bits of that wall. And if I'm moving my hand or my face, it'll update the data on my face and hands. So that allows for a pretty radical compression because most of the scene behind me is pretty much static, so it doesn't need as much data updating. If you're in an action scene or I'm standing in, in the back and there's freeway traffic or something going on, a lot of motion, a lot of luminance, it needs to refresh more. And the problems that you see in low bit rates and bad compression called macro blocking is basically the system isn't refreshing enough. And so you see the differences as it, as it re-refreshes uh, every so many frames. In our, con in our case, it's like every 24 frames. Uh, you'll see the picture all that's flashed crisper, sharper, because it just updated it. And then it'll try to save, use some of that redundant uh, data to try to, you know, to keep the compression down, to keep the bits down. So um, the uh, basically the compressor, what it does, if there's any bad effect or if it's not done properly, it'll block and you'll see little squares, as the, especially during motion stuff like a, a wind storm or a real fast pan or something like that. But as far as the color, um, you, we don't change the tint or the color. We don't change the contrast. We don't change uh, those type of parameters that most people are familiar with, like with telecine. After I finish the compression of the files, the files are sent over to authoring. Then authoring uh, attaches the audio and muxes the whole thing together. That's basically the end of the process from our end. I would say for a typical feature, um, it could take uh, three weeks to a month. Depending, that's that's the whole process with the QC, all of it, building out, breaking out the chapters, and all that stuff. But uh, the actual editing time, actually just sitting there and going frame by frame, is probably about two weeks or two and a half weeks, depending on the difficulty of the feature. Uh, my name is Orly Crow Triffman, and I'm the director of production here at PHL. Uh, every day we get materials and assets that come in that the project managers here oversee, and we put together the disc based on how everything comes together. Our typical day would consist of maybe receiving menus and then from menus it goes into the pre-qualification. Pre-qualification will then look and make sure that you know the colors are right, the spellings are right, that it was delivered in the right format. Then it goes to it goes to the authors where the authors will then come back and you know they'll check it out and they'll make sure that it's again looks good start building and add it into their discs based on how the materials are coming. At the same time we have Compression who does the prequal and they'll be getting video from there and then when the subtitles and the audio comes in prequal will again look at it, send it to our authors and then our authors will multiplex it all in, 
Then from there, it goes into quality control. Quality control will oversee the whole entire project from start to end, do navigation, we'll do linear plays, we'll basically try to break the disc. All right, so this is the authoring department. Um, right here you see our proprietary software for um, Blu-ray authoring. Um, in this department, we gather the video, uh, audio, and subtitles, and we put it into um, what we call streams, uh, so that a user can access everything um, in the way that they want to present the movie. Um, this version is what we call HDMV, which is a very simplified version of Blu-ray, and you can actually create an entire disc with it, um, but it's more like a DVD when it comes to actually programming. Um, you get the high definition content, but it doesn't come with bells and whistles um, like you do when we switch to our Java programming. Um, and the Java programming is uh, actual code. Um, it's a little bit more laborious, but we get to do uh, all the special items that you see on a Blu-ray disc, like picture-in-picture -picture or um, games, uh, you know, motion menus and stuff like that. Um, our newest uh, item that we're trying to get working for the for worldwide release is the uh, 3D content and with all the 3D content um, we need what we call a left and right eye image um, to make the stereoscopic um, 3D uh, quality to both the uh, video subtitles and menus um, so uh, pretty much everything that we receive we need uh, twice as much uh, information so that we can get that information one for a left eye and one for a right eye uh, once we're completed with the title and authoring uh, we send it to our QA department which is quality assurance and they check to make sure uh, whether or not we've made any kind of um, bugs and then we'll go back and forth with them a few times to make sure we get a very clean disc and we can ship that out <laughs> Good morning, my name is Yoko Gascon. Um, I manage quality control department for Panasonic Authoring Center. Um, what my department do is that when the compression compresses video, uh, audio is compressed, an authoring department which is consist of programmers, they put together uh, doing um, Blu-ray Java coding and they build the disk. So what we do is that we receive the disk, we actually bond the disk, BDR, and we started testing on a different aspect of the disk. Of course, most of all, we have to make sure that video is compressed in a good condition, which means there is no video artifacts. Audio is compressed, no digital hit, um, no um, channel disconfiguration, all the asset is tested, and also subtitles are tested, because the Blu-ray disc do hold so much information that we do have to test all the audio streams and the subtitle streams. Sometimes they do have 30 subtitle streams, 10 audio um, streams, and so much information, so we do have to test every aspect of it. Another big uh, job is that our department is, of course, the testing Java programming which um, include many testing, uh, inter, uh, interactive future testing. Sometimes the programming do make mistakes and then one button will do something else or each studio has their own uh, different specification for the disk so we do have to test what kind of warnings uh, they want to display, how many seconds and uh, what kind of language they want to. All those studio specifications and uh, asset quality and also the programming code, those are the things we test. Unlike DVD, Blu-ray do hold so much information and the Java coding is quite complicated. Our te testing is probably take more than, uh, let's say 10 times more than what the, it used to take for DVD. Uh, but we do still have to do it with unlimited time, so that is our never-ending challenges that are how effectively we test everything and uh, make sure that everything on the disk is a good condition. So that's what goes into making a Blu-ray disc and once the final product is ready then they show it in the digital theatre which is a massive room with digital projection, 3D and all sorts which we managed to have a look in yesterday and it's very very impressive. So that's how they put together a Blu-ray disc. We hope you've enjoyed watching this video and come back for more when we visit THX.